You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow a side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews. So let's get started. Hey, hey, welcome back everyone to Side Hustle Pro. Today on the show, we are welcoming back Miko Drew. For those of you who don't know her, Miko is the Side Hustle Pro entrepreneur in residence. That means we're following her journey for an entire year to learn the real deal of what it takes to build a profitable business from the ground up. Miko is a corporate America retiree turned full-time food blogger. She is building a food and lifestyle empire. And yes, y'all, she walked away from a six-figure salary to start Miko in the Dish. Her brand is steadily rising, and so it's time to check in with her again to see how it's all going. So welcome back to the guest chair, Miko. Tell us, what have you been up to since we last spoke? So much, so much. And you know, uh, well, one, I'm excited to be back in the chair. I've heard so many people have listened to the original podcast and have said that, you know, they were really inspired by uh, my journey. So I'm excited to update the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> but I've encountered all three. So oh, wow. I'm excited to, to chat with you about all of them. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love that people are listening. And yeah, people have actually reached out to me and said, you know, can we have Miko weekly? <laughs> and I'm like, it's a weekly podcast, y'all. So I don't want the people. Yeah. You don't want that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We need to give her time to, to make progress and report back. So let's, let's get into building your brand into a profitable business. So what are some of the steps you've been taking to grow the Miko and the Dish brand since we last spoke? Okay. So, I mean, the obvious is leveraging social media like crazy. As a blogger, you can't live without it. And so um, making sure to be present on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, and some of those I'm stronger than others. Um, but definitely Instagram has been the driving force to help drive um, awareness of my brand, but to also drive traffic to my site. Um, and one of the ways, and, and traffic is really important to bloggers, particularly bloggers who lean on advertising. I don't lean on advertising so much, um, but definitely take what I can get. So um, I use Instagram, and a lot of people don't um, reference Instagram as a traffic driver because it's been really hard to track. Um, but I, I actually... Um, since I've turned my Instagram account to a business account, I'm able to see uh, some of see the, that actually Instagram is a huge driver for my traffic, and also have some um, different apps set up in order to help drive Instagram traffic back to my site. So social media, um, but then to open an e-commerce store. Um, uh, where I am selling foodie apparel. I um, continue to expand that store and that's continuing to grow. And I'm sure we'll get into uh, get into more of that, but I'm expanding that. And that's like the, the, the major uh, means of monetization for my side by opening up the store. I've definitely been able to leverage the association between both food and lifestyle um, in, in order to bridge that gap. So that's been great. Um, and then um, future income, I'm just hoping to come from some partnerships that I've been setting up along the way. Oh, that's awesome. So the T-shirt line is bringing in steady income. Yes, the oh. T-shirt line is bringing in steady income. Um, I started off with uh, five core designs, used Fiverr, a designer there. I had a vision for what I wanted, um, a theme for what I wanted, presented it. I did some researching. I think Fiverr has a lot of different talent, and it takes a while to find really good good talent. Um, found someone at Fiverr who actually brought my vision to life, and since then I've just been selling shirts like crazy, um, and, and, and that's been really good, and now I'm at the point to where I'm looking to expand the, the number of offerings. So I'm hoping to um, triple, maybe quadruple the current offerings on the site, not to expand um, beyond shirts, but to other types of uh, foodie swag, but using some, for right now, like my, my Instagram, um, if you follow me, I often 
have foodie quotes. So I'm using some of the quotes that I use on my site or on my Instagram in order to as messaging for some of my apparel and swag. So I'm excited to to, to bring some more stuff to life. Very smart. Yeah, I recently dabbled in t-shirt making as well. Um, and you and Fiverr is you're right. It takes a while to find a designer that. Yeah, is really yeah. Good. I got really lucky. So well, one, I am like I'm a Google fanatic. I'm a search fanatic. Like I can search something out. So I, but I did, but I did say I took like a day to like search through all of the different guys. I quiz. I ask questions. I ask for portfolios. I want to see the work that you've done. Once. I found somebody who had work that 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 was at the quality that I felt I needed. I've stuck with him through and through, and he's amazing. I'm happy to share. Mm, am I happy to share that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am, but he's, he's, I'm he's sure amazing. He would be happy um, if, you if, if he gets too much work, then he won't be able to do mine. That, that's basically <laughs> what I'm saying. But I'm not right. so no, I'll share if somebody wants. Folks it. on Fiverr, they they know how to balance it. But moving on from t-shirts. Speaking of Instagram, how is that? helped your email list it's been awesome so well one i I um, use a drip campaign. It's a, it's a small drip campaign where I, I basically try to get people from Instagram and I use a app called Holler. That's H-L-R dot C-O where I direct message anyone who follows me on Instagram and, and let them know, hey, there's a link in my profile. Click that to go to my site. And I've seen so much traction just from that asking people directly, will you go to my site and visit and take a look? I don't specifically ask them to sign up for my email list because I feel like people will be like, oh, eh, she's just trying to get something out of me. So I just invite them to visit my site. And when they visit my site, then I have automatic pop-ups that invite them to actually subscribe. So um, that's been huge in increasing my email list. And my email list has probably has tripled since the last time we spoke. Oh, no, 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 no. So, yeah, my, my email list has tripled since the last time that we last spoke. So um, it's been incredibly useful um, in driving um, um, increased subscribers to my email list. Oh, so, congrats. Yeah. So are you comfortable sharing the number or maybe a percentage of where your email list has, how it has increased or where it is now versus where it was? About 300%. So, um, so when I, when I started on here, I had what, like 200 subscribers on my email list. Um, so yeah, it's definitely expanded. And a lot of that has been like some of the partnerships that I was talking about, bringing more awareness to my brand, also using the holler, uh, to help drive, uh, some awareness. You, uh, inside hustle pro has been great at driving awareness and, and bringing people to the site. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all been, you know, just posting and strategic partnerships. That is good to know. And I'm so glad that, you know, we're getting the word out about Miko and the dish and the awesome work and food that you're making. So <laughs> now let's get into a little bit of the challenges. Um, you talked about it, it's been good. It's been ugly. It's, it's been everything in between. Um, so what are some of the challenges you've encountered? Yeah. So, I mean, we can just jump right into finances. So finances are really, really tough. I've had to, um, and this is me being blatant and transparent. <laughs> and I know the people love that. Yes. So, um, I've had to downsize incredibly. Um, I had to move out of my apartment, move in with, um, friends, um, in order to help pursue this and, and it be financially feasible. Right. So, um, that's one thing, like I've made a complete change in my life. And, and, and the hard part about that is one, um, it's very humbling, um, to have to ask for, for help. Uh, fortunate. I have really great friends who believe in what I'm doing. Um, and, um, have, and have backed me. I've, you know, set a plan in place in order to, to, to change those at some point, change that, um, situation at some point. But right now it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning heavily on people to help you know, to help me get by. So that's, that's one thing. Um, one thing that I think don't, doesn't always come to life when you talk about entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship consumes a lot of your life is balancing personal. And so, um, over since the last time we spoke, I had a breakup that's been incredibly hard. And with the breakup, it's, um, I would say my productivity definitely dropped down. Like my motivation 
<laughs> to put out the way that I was has dropped. And I feel like I'm just now getting into a place where I'm 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 trying to pick that back up. But yeah, like so so that's been been really challenging. Um, uh, those, 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 that would be the, the two biggest things. And I think um, another thing is just, you know, maintaining con- consistency. Um, so I, I, I just, a couple things, like those things that I kind of mentioned have kind of like, as a result, really impacted uh, the consistency. But I mean, I'm with a lot of prayer, I would say <laughs> I've been really blessed because my blog continues to grow. My, um, my t-shirt and my e-store, excuse me, my e-store continues to grow, um, in spite of some of the, um, hurdles I've encountered, um, over the last couple of months. Oh, wow. I mean, you, you really got transparent. Um, thank you for sharing all of that with us because I know it can't be easy. Um, I know when I, had have gone through breakups in the past like i would lose at least 15 pounds it was always a good diet um oh yes honey (laughs) i mean felt but (laughs) but um, but you know just sad you know a little melancholy like not as you know excited about things that are going on and things that i know i should be excited about and, (laughs) and pumped about but you know it, it definitely um, can can drag you down just yeah. a little bit, just well, a little bit. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll get to this in a little bit, but you're about to get major exposure, and people are probably going to be hitting you up in the DMs, so, you know, you won't be sad for long. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, and that has started already. We, oh, I, get, I get a couple of DMs from time to time. I actually had a celebrity DM, too, and it was, I was like, wow, this Uh-oh. is interesting. Yeah, good timing. <laughs> we might have to get to that good bonus, timing. bonus at the end. But on a, on a more positive note, though, what have been some of the rewards and, and great achievements since the last time? Well, I, I will continue to say that um, I, I do this and I share my journey because I want to help people. I want to inspire people. And when that is, um, is confirmed, it always is rewarding. So I think, um, the more exposure I get, the more I can help more people realize that they're, that if this is truly a a burning desire for them, that there is a path and it, isn't always clean cut, but there is a path if you put forth the work and the effort. And I'm constantly getting messages from people really all the time saying, you know what, I'm, I, I'm so happy to have found your blog. I love what you're doing. It's inspiring me to do what I want to do and, and, and so on and so forth. So I think that is probably um, the, one of the biggest rewards um, that I get out of doing what I do. Um, and then it's also just allowed me to be on a platform to kind of develop some of the partnerships that we're going to go into a a little bit later. But, um, yeah, I think that, you know, by building the blog and making sure I take a stand in becoming an authority in the space, um, it's it's allowed me to make connections with people that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, so, and, and, and those connections really are helping me to grow like exponentially and a lot faster than what I what I think a traditional blogger would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's get right into the partnerships because I I think that you have been really strategic about building your brand and aligning yourself with influencers. So walk us through that process. How did you go about building these relationships and partnerships in your niche? So I, I think first things first is that like, while I think I'm an expert and an authority in this space, I'm never too much of an expert to learn from other people. So I've always positioned myself in a, uh, in a way that I, when I reach out to someone, it's, it's to learn from them. Um, um, for the most part, I, I, I think that's been my approach. So, um, so for example, I would say like, I'm going to shout out a couple people who have been really great mentors, uh, as influencers. And that, that would be like Darius Cooks, I mean, I'm saying, saying they're like um, Instagram handles, but Darius Cooks, Grand Baby Cakes, pulled Together, um, they're all um, people of color, they're all foodies, they're all bloggers, they all um, have really forged individual paths, um, different business models, but have been incredibly helpful in mentoring me and helping me understand um, what, one, the way that they went, but also... Um, 
what opportunities exist and how to approach different different things uh, as it relates to the business. Um, with that being said, I've been able um, to work with Darius Cooks on an even extended um, a partnership, I guess, where we're forming um, what I'd like to call the Black Food, well, what's called the Black Food Network. <laughs> and basically what the Black Food Network is, it's an online platform repository for recipes, stories told from uh, the Pan-African lens, right? So I think what, what, what typically we see on television um, isn't always reflective of our own experiences. And given that so much has happened over the last year, particularly as it relates to, to, to the black culture, I think it's, we both thought it was incredibly relevant to have a platform through food, since food is so important um, to blacks, Caribbeans, uh, um, Afro-Latino, you know, just people who look like you and me. Um, it was important to tell our stories too. And so uh, Darius actually came up with the idea um, I reached out to him, a learning email. We continued to have conversations. We wanted to partner with each other. He came up with that idea, and I and I was like, I'm on board. Um, <laughs> but because I made that initial uh, email for outreach, um, I was top of mind when the idea came about. And so even though I'm not, um, I'm not as old of a blogger as some people are in the business, I still was able to leverage, get, or, you know, to take advantage of this opportunity because I reached out, I made connections. And I think that anybody who's new to any industry or even a veteran, it, it never hurts to reach out, to make connections, to form relationships with people, not asking for anything more than a conversation. You never know what will come from it. Yep. I, I definitely have um, cold emails. A lot of these uh, podcast episodes are people who have cold email, but I will say that there is a technique to it because now, and I'm sure you're experiencing this too, I'm more on the receiving end and it's mm -hmm, been, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been um, a learning experience in, in how I want to handle some of these things. And so talk about your technique in reaching out. I know you talked about just approaching it as a learning experience, but I'm sure you weren't like, oh, I just want to pick your brain. Like, I'm sure you you did it in a way where he saw value in it for himself as well, or, or maybe you didn't. Tell us how um, you structured that email. Yeah, so I think with any of the people that I reached out to, I had to do my research. I wanted to know what they were experts at. So um, hopefully none of these people get upset about me mentioning their names or my approach to the conversation. But with Grant and Baby Cakes, she has done um, lots of national media uh, spots. So think Good Morning America. She's starting a new class on, at, on Craftsy, which is a DIY learning uh, platform. She's wrote, she's written a book. I mean, she's she's been everywhere. She's constantly on morning news. Um, so for me, I was like, you know what? She's really good at leveraging PR. I want to reach out to her for that. And so I make sure that I craft my emails really talking about like what I know that they're great at and what I specifically want to learn from them and, and, and making sure to communicate the questions that I have. If you go to them saying, I have questions, questions, but not, yes. but they, you don't know what you really want from them. You just want to pick their brain. Like they don't have time for that. People no. don't have time for that. No. Um, and so I just made sure I was very specific about what I hope to learn from them and, um, really not asking to take too much of their time in order to do so. Right. I like that you mentioned getting specific because, um, I, and I was talking to another podcaster, Greggy Hill, about this when my episode on, on his show finally airs. Um, we talked a little bit, or that might have been offline, sorry, but we talk about how people send us these vague emails like, hey, you know, I noticed you doing this, I do this, let's chat. Like, excuse me? <laughs> With a with a um, word on the launch of Black Food Network, I've gotten so many emails like, "Hey, could you tell me more about Black Food Network?" <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I need you to ask some specific. Yes, yeah, right. so I, I completely get it. Yeah, so, yeah. specific if, questions are key to getting responses. Yes. Specific questions, hone in on exactly what you want to learn, and emphasize. I will take no more than X amount of your time. Twenty minutes is a sweet spot for me, so emphasize that in any email. Moving right along. 
So you reach out to Darius. Are you guys in the same city? Is that where you first um, linked up or was that via phone oh, call? No, he's in Atlanta. Oh. I'm in Minneapolis. So um, that, no, we are not in the same city. Um, basically, Darius is really big on Periscope. You're familiar with Periscope, yes. right? Yep, uh, I'm familiar with Periscope. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so everyone familiar with Periscope, a live streaming kind of um, app. So very similar to Facebook Live. Well, he does a lot of those. And some of the ones that he does are focused on food. Some are focused on personal. Others are focused on brand, like branding and consulting. And so he did one on branding that I thought was really, really rich in information. So I just reached out to him and told him thank you because he didn't have to share that information. So that's how the initial contact came because I was just like, hey, I just want to say, thank you like you were so transparent about this this and this I found it incredibly valuable thank you so much I didn't ask him to read anything to check out my anything nothing I just had strategically but everybody should have this my signature with my info in it Mm -hmm. and he checked me out so after he checked me out he responded like hey I checked out your stuff it's really really good let's talk and that's how the relationship started me telling him thank you Yes. for something he already was going to do regardless of whether I was there or not and him checking me out as a result. Um, and then from there, we've developed a relationship. And with um, with that, the formation of the Black Food Network. And so um, did you want me to kind of go into like... Yeah, I was just about to ask. So give us the behind the scenes of how this whole project has uh, this whole, you know, it's like a, a network that will live on, will it live on a platform other than YouTube or it will be based on YouTube? It will be its own site, but it's, it's incredibly its exciting. I'm, I'm so, so excited, excited for it. It's almost like um, the Blavity of ta- the taste made. It's like taste made and Blavity combined. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I would like it to liken it to. Um, but essentially it'll be its own site where, I, along with other food personalities, share uh, recipe videos, um, um, some tips and tricks in the kitchen, food news, um, and it'll be regularly disseminated information um, every month. So super exciting. But the way it came about is kind of like I said, I reached him out to him, said, told him thank you. He checked me out. We just started jiving about different things. And, 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 and Darius is like a serial entrepreneur. So he's always thinking about new things coming up. And he just happened to pass this idea to me to kind of get my feedback. And I was like, uh, we should do this right away. I honestly was asking, can we launch this in July? <laughs> <laughs> Because I was like, this is amazing. Um, but he was like, no, we should wait to the fall. But we've used the time and we definitely needed all the time to get it uh, up and running. So uh, over the summer, he and I had conference calls along with the other personalities where we set out this basically um, editorial uh, guide for the different top subject matter we wanted to touch going into September. Um, once we kind of outlined all those things, everybody built their own recipes that they wanted to to touch on each topic. Um, then we went through a process of um, iteration where we read through and made sure, build um, our dialogue for the different um, different videos that we were going to be, not dialogue, but, you know, build the content for the different videos that we were going to be shooting. Um, and then back in uh, July, we all flew down to Atlanta and recorded the videos. And um, honestly, it's a grassroots operation. Darius has a really nice home, so we just did it in his house. <laughs> so everybody has the same back, the, the ba- same backsplash, <laughs> the same decor. Well, um, but he has um, yeah. an awesome equipment set up. And um, really, we just kind of went for it. Um, and he's been doing videos on YouTube for several years now. So he kind of, he kind of has a a feeling for what's good. He's also been on food network. Um, so him as the director actually worked out really, really well. Um, but each of us shot had, uh, had about three or four days where we just went balls to the wall and shot all of our videos. I mean, some people shot up to 
seven different videos in a three day period, which is insane. Um, but because that includes like crazy grocery shopping, yeah, just preparing say, for like, French you know, being on camera this. for the first time. Some people were on the camera for the first time. So it's, it's it was huge learning curves, very stressful situations, but great group of people to work with. We had a ball. We had a ball. It's been fun. And since then, um, just the team has just been working on editing um, videos and getting the website together for the launch September 1st. Okay, so that is literally Thursday, September 1st. It's right. It's here. It's basically here. <laughs> it's here. It's so, so exciting. Excited it's here. So, so you- we've been, you know, doing little teasers leading up to the launch and they've been so well welcomed. Um, I posted like one on Twitter and I literally, I think I've been retweeted like, I don't know, 25, 26,000 times. Um, it's insane how much people are, how, how many people are excited about, um, the Black Food Network. Oh, wow. Um, and in terms of the content, so you guys have recorded enough episodes for, um, the remainder of the year or like, how will it work? Yeah. So we'll have to re- we'll have to go back out to Atlanta. It's basically we 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 recorded for the first two months um, and then we'll go back out to record for another two months or it, it, it uh, yes, we'll record for another two months. So I think that's basically the, the way that we're approaching it right now. It may change. We may do more if, if the team grows. Um, or shift things around as the team grows. But right now we're focused on um, the, the the core five personalities. And then once we kind of get a handle of things, we hope to expand it. Because there's lots of people who have reached out, particularly in the blogging community, who are like, I want to be involved, of course. Um, but it's just too much to take on right now for our small team. So we're hoping to just focus on our five, continue to build really great content, make sure that it's coming out regularly. And then... Uh, as 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 the team grows, we'll hopefully be able to expand and open up for other people to be able to join in. Okay, and and so what's the the monetate, monetization plan for this, or is this more of a brand building tool? Uh, well, it's always brand building, but the major focus is to attract brands for sponsored content, um, particularly brands who are interested in, in the African American audience. I think within the food space, there's lots of opportunity. Um, there's nobody I that I know of that is really honing in, and I mean. African-American market, we spend so much money um, and food is such a major component of our lifestyles that um, anyone who's able to hone in on this market is going to do really, really well. And so I think our major focus is building really great, high quality content in order to attract um, brand sponsorship. Got it. And and then this content will be shared on Facebook as well, because I can just see it with, you know, the BuzzFeed food and tasties of the world just getting shared over and over again. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. We will have the, the main website. But for the most part, our, our goal is always to leverage social media because it's the heart of all of our businesses. And we know how important it is. And, and that's where people are anyway. Right. Like we have to go to where the people are. So um, we absolutely plan on using some similar strategy in order to get or share the word and share some of the video content. Awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait. So let's shift a little bit um, to balancing life and self-care. Um, you know, we didn't go too deep on the challenges because I, I didn't want to go to a dark place. <laughs> but I It's do. not dark. It's not dark. There's light. There's, There's light. light. There's light. But I want to know, um, for example, what does your morning look like? What's your routine in that sense? And how do you structure your day? Yeah. So I... I now my mornings are looking like I wake up around 6 37 I work out it's so important it's so important (laughs) for me to make sure I get that workout in because I just feel good after it so I started making sure to incorporate that in every morning um it starts out with um, me waking up prayer then I jump out of bed I work out, I do my daily burn. So um, those who don't know, Daily Burn is an online app 
um, it's an app, it's a, it's an online website, and it can be streamed for smart televisions, but I love it because it's super convenient, and no matter where I go, I have no excuse, I could use it. So I de- basically stream that, and then from there, I typically will go to a cafe. My home is like my sanctuary, and it's very hard for me to work there. So I will make sure that I go to a space that feels like a workspace, so I go to a cafe. There's two different ones that I choose between, depending on... on um, the area that I need to be in, but I, I'll go to a cafe and I'll basically work from a cafe for three days out of the week. And then two days out of the week, I, my mornings after my workout will consist of me cooking or developing re- or developing recipes. Okay. So even though you've now moved into, moved in with your friend, you still think of it as like a sanctuary and it, it's that comfortable that you can't do work there. I just can't do it. I just can't. Like, I've tried. I can't do it. When I come in, t- because it's also like, it's not my home, right? So now I'm going not just to another, to an open space in my home. I'm going to my room, essentially. In my room, there's a bed. And it's like, who's going who's gonna to want right. you to the bed? Like, it's <laughs> over I can't do it no yeah it's like when I used to tell myself I was gonna study in bed I was just gonna read this case in bed no that's not the way it works so (laughs) wake up the next morning um (laughs) it's you mentioned that you have been slowly getting back into a productive routine because it was hard at first to, to really find the enthusiasm to do stuff so how are you keeping yourself on top of your projects nowadays yeah so uh, the time that I've, that I'm using right now has been to really build out content to be ready for the holiday because holiday is going to be so important. So I basically, what I've been doing is using, I, I have an editorial calendar that I use that I've just been building out uh, and researching like what's important, um, uh, for the holiday. So I'm just trying to get ahead basically. Um, and so I use editorial calendars. I, um, switched from, well, I use marketing automation tools in order, uh, to get stuff out. So I was originally using Hootsuite, which is still a really great resource, but I've switched to buffer because, you know, for my businesses and, and really anybody in social media, like the more images that you can show the better. So Hootsuite will send something out to all your platforms, but it, sometimes it'll send it as a link. But Buffer will actually send an image, and I just value um, images so much more uh, being a food blogger. So I've kind of switched over there and started posting things that way. Um what else am I using? I use uh, to keep track of like the things that need to get done. I use Evernote. Um, it's a great kind of like tool to kind of just check off things throughout the day. And I love checking things off. The thing, the problem is like stuff keeps getting added to it. So it never <laughs> feels like it's done, but at least I'm checking things off. Um, what else? I, I definitely leverage my Google calendar a lot. That's something I learned in corporate, making sure the calendar is like your Bible. So that's basically what I do. Um, what else? Yeah. Yeah. And editorial calendars for planning, um, regular calendar for, uh, appointments, meetings, um, using Evernote to like see my progress over the course of the day. Um, and then just, you know, being prepared, planning ahead, planning ahead. Do you also work in time for fun and play? always (laughs) always <laughs> I don't really have a choice I have a, a friends group who, who is very active and so if I am not not around for a certain amount of time they, they get on me um and they'll pull me out <laughs> of my bed or from the cafe to go hang out but yeah I think I think making time to hang out with 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 people or to just feed it to yourself is incredibly important and I make sure I definitely make sure to do that it's um, just, um, last weekend I was in Miami with, um, some friends from business school, like 40 friends from business school hanging out and just having a ball. So I think it's incredibly important to just, you know, take a break. Yeah. I think I saw that on Instagram um, and just enjoy life. Yeah. Otherwise, what I, are you doing it all for? I'm, I'm happy to see that. I saw that on Instagram. Um, it was MLT people, right? Once again, I'm mentioning MLT on the podcast and management leadership for tomorrow. Um, so what do you guys do? Like a reunion? So my MLT class is tight and I would probably say we are the tightest of all. Oh, MLT here classes. we go. So- <laughs> 
Somebody can go and find me on that one, but we are the tightest for <laughs> sure. Um, but basically every year we do a reunion. So um, this year was our five-year reunion from the start of MLT. So we went back to the first place we did our reunion, which was Miami, um, and, and revisited there. But it was like, you know, four five of us like tight in the same hotel <laughs> it was such it was five it was such a good time but yeah we all we we do it every year we do it oh, every year and good. next year's we're going um to lake tahoe already in already in the work so what? Mm-hmm. i'm crashing i'm mlt and i'm ross what i'm crashing <laughs> <laughs> people crash too people crash all the time we had some crashers this one yeah <laughs> people are welcome friends are welcome extended oh. friends are welcome all righty so let's um finish up by talking about sustaining your business and and you know what your goals are before our next check-in but first are you starting to reap income from your business in a way that you see yourself scaling enough to um, get back into your own place or are you still considering a um, part-time job like you talked about in the last check-in I am not considering a part-time job at all okay good <laughs> Um, yeah, that has gone with the wind. So I've, I've actually, you know, I think I said this the last time I've tried a couple times. I actually reached out to a company that is, that's not very corporate. It's still very creative. Um, since the last time we chatted and went in to talk, oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed, went in to talk about opportunities with the company, how I could, you know, bring value to their teams. And the, uh, gentleman that I spoke with was awesome. A, a, a leader in marketing autom- um, automation. And he was super excited to bring me in. But as we started talking, like I'm supposed to be there for an hour, four hours later, we're talking about my business, how he wants, <laughs> how I should get a course, how I need to like get on doing all these things. And now I am cre- working on creating a course as a matter of fact, yeah. but um, the conversation totally shifted from me working t- for the company to me, to him helping me with my business, um, <laughs> which, which to me is like just one banana is like, who does that? <laughs> and then to wow. just further confirmation that this is, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where yeah. I need to be. I, I try and it never works out. This is where God wants me right now. And so I've literally just said, you know what? I'm listening. I'm finally listening and I'm putting everything in this basket, yeah. um, regardless of what people say I should or shouldn't do. So I am completely focused on, um, it, bringing my business to a place to where I am independent and financially free. Okay. And how are you working within these constraints? So one is the moving in with a friend. With a friend, I think um, that was a huge decision for me because I, like I said before, I've been leveraging um, savings in order to. I mean, to, you know, it. It's been a year, believe it or not. I left Target August of last year. It's been a whole year that I have been doing this. Um, and so I, I need to make sure that, you know, I'm moving in a direction that's going to put me in a place where I can be independent. And so I'm really focused on doing that by one, um, moving in. I, I moved in with my friends in order to help with that. Um, um, I've also been, like I said, working on expanding the e-store. I'm working on another business venture outside of uh, food um, with a very close friend um, that has huge potential. Um, So that's also kind of taken some of my focus, Um, but I'm super excited about it. Um, And let's see. So tell me about the class, that the course that you started talking about when you went on this interview. In the course, yes. So, so, uh, so I went on the interview. I was talking to him about the blog and the business, and he's just like, "You have a personality where like it seems like people would want to learn from you." He was like, "I can't see why they wouldn't." And I was like, "Yeah, people ask me all the time." And he was like, "Well, if they're asking for it, why aren't you doing it?" And I'm like, "Uh," <laughs> and I had no answer. He was like, "Yeah, okay." So he was like, last night I happened to create this platform for a course and I didn't know why I was creating it, but I think I know why now. And I was like, oh, 
okay. So he he just kind of kind of planted the seed in my head that that was something that was needed uh, or that was that, that's something that I could even do. I was I I I thought about it before but never really thought like I could do it on my own. Um and then I saw um I had actually been research, researching um Danielle Leslie. Oh, get out. Yes, I did research, and then I saw that you covered her too, yeah. and I was like, you know what, I'm going to sign up for this course. So yeah. I am signed up with her now to actually help bring the course to life, and I'm also part of a mastermind group, like an entrepreneurial women's mastermind group. Okay. I brought it up to them, and it, 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 I've never seen the women more excited about an idea, and they literally helped me flush out my course like in a session so, because they were so excited about like Love me it. bringing something like um, so, uh, that, that, that's what I'm working on too. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Danielle is awesome. You're in the best hands ever. Oh my gosh. That makes me so happy. Um, but then speaking of course, and all the different things that you're working on for next time, before we go, how are you prioritizing and making sure that we, you know, we're not doing the typical thing where we're like, um, oh my God, I want to work on this and I want to work on this and everything looks great. Like, how are you focusing on one thing or what's most important first? Yeah, I think that's really hard. I, I, I wish I could give you an answer for like how I'm solving it like consistently. Um, but I think each day is a new day. What I try to do is set objectives for the week. And then, you know, I, I definitely spread my attention across multiple things, but I try to focus on one thing in a given day, um, in order to help make sure that I'm getting things done. Otherwise it would be, it would be crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to like plan social media. I'm trying to to get my content together for Black Food Network. I'm trying to build a course. Like, I can't, it's really hard for me to do all those things. But because I'm not working at a nine to five, I'm able to devote my full days to different projects in order to get them done. And so that's basically how I do it. I try to give a day or a couple of days to getting something done versus trying to do multiple things in one day. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you have a little bit more time to kind of compartmentalize your brain a little bit. Given. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 I think that's what's different from from what I'm doing versus someone who's actually has a side hustle because I feel like they, it, it would be a lot more challenging to do something like that. But given the parameters that I live within, I'm able to like at least devote days at a time to a certain to a certain area in order to get things done. But everything I feel like everything needs to be touched within a week. I def anything that doesn't need to be, I'm I'm leaving. It's on a list, but it's on a list that won't get that just doesn't get checked out if I don't get the time to do it. Okay. Um, but I try to, you know look at like what needs to be done like deadline wise I love deadlines if there's a deadline I can work within it so I typically like to see like what's most important at a week at a time in getting done and what needs to be turned in during that week I'll prioritize that at the at the head of the week devote a day to getting it done if a day is needed and then move on to the next thing but I I certainly try to compartmentalize in order to get things done and 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 based on you know the time it needs to be completed all right well Miko I think this you know brings us to a close as far as this check-in but I'm so excited about the updates that you had this round. Um, Black Food Network is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Is it just blackfoodnetwork.com? Yes, it's blackfoodnetwork.com. And then on social, it's at Black Food Network or at? It's uh, on social, it's a little bit different. Um, uh, someone had already captured Black Food Network, so it's BLK Food Network. Dot, or be okay food network across all other social platforms oh okay so it's consistent yeah. there that's cool all right you guys you heard it here first check out miko and all of her partners on black food network launching on thursday september 1st and then okay. we're gonna we're gonna check in again probably in another two months so we can squeeze in um two more check-ins before the year is over so look for the next check-in with Miko in about two months. And thank you, as always, for joining us and being so transparent about your journey right now. You know what? I love sharing, as I said before. And if there's anything that I'm saying that it's helping people and make, helping them realize, like, it's not always cut uh, a clean cut. It's not always black and white. I, I think I think that's the most important thing that you're offering people is a view into, like, what what really goes on. And so I'm happy to help share that. 
Thank you. Thanks so much. And there you have it. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at side hustle pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the side hustle pro Facebook community. Go to side hustle forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe rate and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week.